So I'm being invaded by these stray animals. Nah, just kidding. Those are my chickens. And Ruru, mean old Ruru up there. That's my attack dog. Most people got beware of the dog signs. I've got beware of the chicken. And so this is the mess that I'm dealing with. I just top dressed this bed and they are in here digging it up. I'm gonna have to uh, put something on this to uh, keep them from getting in there as I let them free range. Look at Ruru, he's acting like he's pecking at something as he inches closer to me to try to come in for the attack. I'm gonna attack his ass first. So, I'll walk over this way and show you the damage. I actually just sprinkled some, some ashes on here earlier, but again, you're probably, it's gonna be hard to tell, but you can just see all the gaps and lumps and stuff that they've done to my garden bed. So I'm definitely gonna have to put screens up like this. So I put these up to protect that so they wouldn't get in there and do this. And uh, I'm gonna have to do that on them raised beds as they keep getting into there and spreading crap everywhere. All right, so here's some of this broccoli. And like I said, they just, they've taken off. They're looking good. We've got plenty of them. I'm fixing a half two. Uh, once I get the rest of these beds finished up, I am going to be moving some, give them some more room uh, to do their thing, maybe. I don't know yet. We ain't decided. They look a little tight in here. Don't have much space, so I am going to uh, thin them out and uh, move some of them. Here's some... Uh, lettuce we actually got some butter crunch lettuce and this one right here just looks awesome it's got a little more room and it's just formed perfectly uh, the rest of these like i said they're real crowded in here so i'm probably going to thin these out as well plant some in some of these boxes we did end up with two broccoli in here uh got two broccoli grow growing or oh, three broccoli growing amongst the lettuce and you can see this one how thin it is, uh, just because it's in tight quarters in here. But we'll thin that out. Around. We'll walk over here like I was showing a minute ago, and I got these cages up to protect my potatoes, my greens from the chickens. They like to get in here and scratch it all up, so this kind of helps keep them from doing that. But this uh, here are potatoes that we started from seed and um, they are doing pretty good and so you can kind of see the leaf difference and the color but that one back there is actually a seed potato that we bought uh, from online we ordered them from burpee and they sent them out to us this one is actually a store-bought potato from a sack bag that sprouted on the windowsill and we put it in here so this is just a little experiment that we're doing this is actually going to be an update on the experiment video that i post uh, they're actually looking pretty healthy uh they're doing good the the seed potatoes which are these here they didn't have any sprouts on them when we put them in the ground and uh, so they've come up pretty good these already had sprouts and you can see they're just that much further along they blew through the ground that's another sack potato there and then this one's a seed potato and that one's a seed potato I'll move around here we've got another seed potato there and one back there in the corner and i've got one little one starting right here barely sprouted and then this little sprout right here so we've got a total of uh 12, I believe, potatoes in this 4x4 raised bed box. So we'll see how they do. And like I said, it's just, it was a experiment that we're doing. We planted store-bought potatoes and then seed potatoes. And we're going to see which ones produce and how they produce and if there's any difference, which I'm sure there is. But we'll find out. Move over to here. And here's our carrot starts. So we've actually planted carrots. 
Uh, and these, this all got planted roughly three weeks ago and everything has sprouted and took off. Uh, you can see that patch you'll see on the video when I post it. I had a little uh-oh and spilt a bunch of seeds right there. But we've got that patch that I need to thin out and let's thin out just this whole bed, which we're working on. I'm going to try to, I know you're not supposed to, or they say you're not supposed to, but I'm going to try and pluck these out, thin them out, and save the ones that I pluck out and re-put them somewhere else and see if they take and how they grow, uh, you know. The way I figure is they're going to be thrown away anyways. Might as well give them that chance and see what they can do. And then if they don't do anything or they don't form properly or they don't take well, you know, you don't lose nothing because you're going to lose them anyways. Nothing but a little bit of time, and it's worth the time to me. Uh, we'll move over here to our onion bed. So this one's a little little bit bigger. It's four foot and a half by four foot and a half. We planted all our onions on here, and uh, you'll see this in a video. These were planted three weeks ago, and they are looking pretty good. Growing. Got big sprouts. We got three different types of onions that we planted here. Uh, we have a yellow, a white, and a red, and I don't know the variety of onion they were. I just know they were red, yellow, and white. So we'll see how they how they take what they produce. I can't wait to give y'all some uh, some uh, harvest videos. I've been I've been that's kind of what got me all into this stuff is watching these harvest videos. So it's been pretty cool. Here's a little. Uh, survival bell pepper so I had these peppers through the winter um, they kind of they kind of got uh, stalled I actually had them in this bed right here and I didn't secure this properly the bottom anyways and had too much dirt in there and the whole box collapsed and so all these bell peppers when they were starters uh, they all fell through the box and so by the time I come home they were all wilted and just almost gone so we ended up moving them into these buckets and uh, I've got another one that survived over here and so they've kind of just been dormant you know they were there they were producing but then they stopped and uh, so they had a late start and I just kept them in these pots all winter uh, I put a trash bag over them to help with the cold and keep humidity in and they are looking mighty rough the freeze the light freeze that we had last weekend got to them but there is fruit on the tree uh there's a lot of new fruit coming out it's a lot of flowering over there so we're gonna see what happens like i said you know they looked like they were left for dead i could have easily just pulled them out thrown them in the compost but I let them be. I gave them a little top dressing of compost. I put them some uh, wood shavings in from when I, ra I made my uh, raised bed with the chainsaws. I took all them shavings and put it on top there. And uh, they're producing. So we'll see what they do. Maybe this weather will help them out. I've got the broccoli. So we learned a valuable fact. Our broccoli turned yellow. And we assumed it was from the sun, so we did some research, and that, in fact, is what it is. It's from the sun, and uh, we probably should have picked it about a week ago, but now it's starting to get all misshapen and whatnot. But it's still good to eat. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little discoloring from the sun. And now I've learned that to prevent that from happening, you can take these leaves and put them in what we call a chongo down here in Tex-Mex, Texas, and that'll protect them from the sun. So put them, put a rubber band on top of these leaves, completely cover it, and that'll keep your broccoli white. So for those of you who knew that, well, no harm, no foul. For those who didn't, that's a good little lesson we learned because if you're trying to sell this stuff, nobody wants to buy yellow broccoli. But for the homestead, it don't change the flavor. It's all the same. We eat it. If it eats, we eat. So I'm trying to finish my top dressing over here on this long flower bed. This is the compost 
uh, that I'm using. So I got my compost piles. If y'all remember in the older videos, I had a tub here, which the tub just got pulled out minutes ago and is right here. And I done used all the compost for it, for these three beds. And uh, that bed back there is, is fully compost. It's all compost. There's no dirt. Uh, these three beds have a layer of dirt and then a layer of compost. This bed here has a layer of dirt and then a layer of cow manure compost that we get supplied by our cows. And a quick update on that. Oh, I forgot. But, sorry guys. So this cow here is my honey bunny. She is the first animal that we had and we actually had her before we got the homestead. We lived on a 0.38 acre lot in the city, in the middle of town, and we purchased that cow. And that kind of slingshotted us into finding land, selling our house, and having a place to put her. She is a little over two years old. She's about two and a half, I believe. Um, and we just got her back. So where has she been? Well, we sent her to get bread. So I dropped her off at a buddy's place where he's got a bull. And um, he had a big black Angus bull and uh, just a nice healthy looking bull. And we took her over there to get bread. So hopefully in about six months, she will be dropping the first baby to be born on the homestead. So we brought a lot of animals in on the homestead but this will actually be the first one born on the homestead so you know how exciting is that so she we took her over there in december so she's been over there a long while but just with the weather and timing i haven't been able to pick her up until uh two days ago actually we went and picked her up and brought her back home so she's getting reacquainted with all the animals here and she was actually gone when i got two of the new members the donkeys so my donkey and my henny, they came in after she was gone. So they had some uh, acquainting to do and getting to know each other. But uh, they seem to be doing all right. So back to my compost. Sorry about that. I drifted a minute. But I'm sifting through this. So this was one of my original compost piles. And I actually just turned it about a month ago. And then I added a bunch of stuff to it, which was a mistake because now i got to get this whole pile right here was on top that is not decomposed and I got to get it out of the way and get to the black gold so I can use it to finish off this last third of this bed top dressing it and then it'll be ready for planting so let me get to that and then I'll get back to you okay that concludes this episode of garden update we updated the onions the carrots, the potatoes, the garden in general, and the animals. So I had to get them updates out. Got all the updates wrapped up in one. So again, this concludes this episode of Garden Update. <sighs> Going back to you, Johnny, in the studio. Y'all can continue with y'all's regularly scheduled program. Till next time.